This meeting is being recorded. Professor Long, can you start maybe? Yeah. So it's our pleasure to have Senia Dila Onsa from University of Oxford. And she will talk about the first part of two lectures with the title of The Arithmetic of Families of Clavia Manifolds, Black Holes and Modularities. Senia, thank please. You. <laughs> But thank you very much and thank you for the invitation. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, okay, so this will be the first part on a, on a talk on, on um, uh, basic applications of the arithmetic of, fami uh, 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 the arithmetic of families of Calabi Yamani falls to black holes and modularity. Um, so the idea is, I mean, maybe uh, this is a, uh, what, I, what we're going to discuss in these talks is as connections between geometry, number theory, and string theory, right? In terms of the of the geometry, right? Uh, we are interested in the geometry of Calabria manifolds and that of their moduli spaces, and the the, the, the these 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 geometries is 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 uh, is um, uh, determined by 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 objects uh, called the periods, right? So part of the the message of these talks is that the periods are fundamental. <laughs> The geometry of <coughs> and their moduli spaces, and also the, 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 the arithmetic of these objects. So it is it is a well known uh, fact that the the the, the 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 geometry of varieties is connected to to its arithmetic. I mean, when one way to look at this is, for example, at the bio conjectures. Um, so 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 we are going to discuss arithmetic. Uh, of, of families of Calabria manifolds and their modularity properties of what we know about them. And one can ask, of course, many questions about, about, about this. For, uh, um, one does ar ar uh, arithmetic by computing um, um, uh, the number of, of rational points when you have a Calabria or a finite field and, com and compute mirror functions. And you can start asking questions. How about mirror symmetry? What happens with mirror symmetry? What happened with singularities? There are also uh, many questions, and one would be interested in here. Um, so we are going to to take these two, uh, 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 what we know of these two, right, in mathematics, and connect them to string theory. And of course, there are many ways of connecting these in, you know, to string theory. But what, what we are going to do is to focus today and in next talk on the physics of black solutions or string theory. And as we will see, there are uh, uh, physical quantities like the area of a black hole would be uh, in certain quantifications of string theory can be given in terms of, 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 of the arithmetic properties of the Calabria manifold, like L values and so on. So I will mostly talk about the work with, with Philip and, and Mohamed Elmi, who was a student at the time in 2000, and, and now he's peace in Dockers, and also Duco Van Straten. And the talk, uh, also the work with Philip and Duco, and, and there is more current work, than, but uh, I don't think we'll have time to get into that. But perhaps Philip will have time to say something about the more uh, the more the work in progress. So, um, so these are the references, and these are my collaborators. I would like to show their, their <laughs> pictures. Uh, this, we were having dinner in, in, in Korea uh, at the time. So the plan of the talks is, the, is, as, is as follows, right? I will start, the, this, this first part is about geometry, right, all this. So I will say what, what I need up, uh, in, for these talks, what we need for these talks um, um, about uh, notions related to Calabria manifolds will be, of course, brief. And uh, as, nice, uh, as I said, I will focus on those uh, uh, facts that, 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 that will be relevant for us. Um, also, uh, after that, I will talk about the attractor mechanism, right, which is about black hole solutions um, in, in string theory, and we will see something uh, rather extraordinary that uh, we get an splitting, uh, splitting of the structure when 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 discussing these solutions. 
And then Philip will take over next uh, Thursday, and he will now turn to the, to, to, to the arithmetic of Calavilla manifolds, and he will start with mostly uh, a classical discussion of, of, of arithmetic of, of, of varieties. And then, uh, uh, but then he will turn into something newer about, in particular, how to compute uh, efficient zeta functions. And then he will relate that to, to, to what I said here uh, in relation to the splitting of the Hodge structure, that you can imagine that, that, that there will be a splitting of the, of the zeta functions at points uh, where the manifold is smooth. Okay, so all those words will be explained in these two lectures, I hope. So, um, so let me start with Calavilla manifolds. I mean, we all know that these are the compact Keller manifolds with vanishing first gen class. And in this talk, I, I will, I will, um, I, I will be really concerned with with the with the case uh, three of three complex dimensions. Yeah. A very important fact that we will need in these talks is that there is a theorem that says that on Calabria manifolds, there is a unique octal constant 30 form that I want to call a capital omega, which is holomorphic, right? Which means that the dimension of the of the, of the 30 global cohomology and, and 03 global cohomology is always one. And in fact, one can almost take this as a definition of a Calabria manifold. The other important fact that we will have in mind all the time is that Calabria manifolds come in families. I mean, they have parameters. They have complex structure parameters and Keller class parameters, as we know, related by neurosymmetry. I will illustrate this usually with a, with a, with a letter here, uh, meaning that we have a family. We are going to talk mostly about the complex structure side. And um, uh, as uh, I mean, it is also known that these modulized, the modulized spaces of these objects are very interesting uh, geometry. Um, okay, so now well, let me get uh, straight into this notion of periods and the complex structure. So one can describe the complex structure of a calabial by the, using the, 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 the parameters from a defining polynomial in an ambient space, right? The properties of the polynomial uh, uh, should be such that the, the first gen class vanishes. And as you vary the coefficients in the polynomial, you vary the complex structure. But Another uh, nicer way to describe, describe the variation of the complex structure, or canonical way to describe the, 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 the complex structure, the variation of the complex structure is to give coordinates in the space, is, is to give nice coordinates on the, on the space of complex structure. And we, and we do that using, using, using the holomorphic form. So as I just said before, the holomorphic form is defined up to a scale. Right, but this otherwise unique, so it defines a line in the integer third cohomology, right? Of, uh, in the integral third cohomology of the Calabria. So you have a caricature like this, right? If you have a three here, right? Then, 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 the, then omega defines a line inside inside H three. So what we're going to do is to study the variations of the complex structure by studying how omega varies inside H3. Of course, you vary the complex structure. What you mean by a PQ form changes. So then omega, this line moves inside, this line moves inside this lattice, right? And the periods, what we call the periods, are the coordinates of this line in, inside H3. Okay. So more explicitly, let alpha and beta be a symplectic basis of H3, the integral cohomology. cohomology. Symplectic means this here, right? That uh, an alpha which a beta gives you one, and alpha which an alpha gives you zero, and then beta and beta gives you zero. Right. This is a symplectic basis of the integral uh, cohomology, and you can write down the 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 the, the, the holomorphic three form uh, in, in 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 terms of this basis. And the coefficients are, of course, the periods, right? So this A here, A and B, run from zero to H to one, because we know that the dimension of the, of the moduli space of complex structures is H to one. 
And so these Zs here will give you projected coordinates on, on, on the moduli space. And the rest, of course, depend on Z, because you only have H to one, right? It's an independent uh, coordinate. Uh, so they so so they are called periods because they are periods of the holomorphic three form, right? So they integral over over um, uh, over the, the integrals over the dual symplectic basis that I call the capital letters here A and B will give you will give you the periods. Yeah. Okay, so that's also the periods, right? As I just said, they are projected coordinates from the moduli space, and they determine the geometry of the moduli space. This is called uh, special geometry. It means that the, 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 the moduli space is complex, has a scalar, uh, is, is scalar, right? Metric is scalar. And, that, and, and it has an extra property that, that, um, uh, that we say that it has holomorphic free potential. That is not the most general definition, but that's the one uh, that that's the one that we usually work with. So we will need we won't need the the, the, the potential today. Um, so so these these uh, the, 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 the the periods, as I said earlier, have they have arithmetic content, and this will be uh, this this will be uh, this will be seen more explicitly or more explicitly. In, in, in Thursday, when Philip gives his talk. Something that is rather important, um, and the reason this description of the, the complex structure moduli space is useful, is that periods are calculable. Right? You can conceive, for example, of writing the holomorphic form and integrating on a basis, but that is really hard. But uh, you can compute periods because they satisfy a differential equation of degree B3, B3 being the third petty number. And this equation is called the Picard Hooks equation. So one can see this intuitively as follows. Consider starting with, with a with, with a with a holomorphic free form and varying with respect to the parameters. Here I'm illustrating just with respect, uh, assume that, that I have a one parameter family, right? So so omega prime means variation with respect to the complex, param complex structure parameter. So you start taking variations of omega with respect to the complex structure. And of course, omega and its derivatives are all closed three forms because the exterior derivative, the RAM, the, the exterior, the, the RAM operator commutes with these variations of the complex structure. So they are all closed three forms. Uh, so therefore, and most B3 of them are linearly independent. So at some point you get a differential equation, and a differential operator acting on omega, right? And you get you get something that is exact equal homology. And the degree the degree of L has to be P3. So now because we are integrating over a fixed basis, you can integrate this equation from both sides. And, and you, what you get is that, that the period satisfied this, this, this differential equation. Right, the Picard Fuchs equation. So I'll focus today in, in one parameter examples, right? One parameter examples means that H to one is one, so B3 is four. The, the other thing that is nice is that the Picard Fuchs equation is Fuchsian. So that means that, that, that uh, the singular points uh, uh, correspond to regular singularities. And moreover, there is a prescription to obtain the picard hooks equation, right? At least this started with the work of Dork a while ago, and then Gerhard and Kapan and Salarinsky developed an algorithm to compute this. So in a case-by-case -case basis, uh, if you don't have too many parameters, and in practice, you can't compute this. So on Thursday, Philip will relate the periods, and, and in particular, picard hooks equations to zeta functions, right? And uh, so this will be, be pretty nice. So as I just said in this seminar, we will work, uh, I mean, today we will work with just one parameter, uh, uh, one complex structure parameter. So H21 is one, so B3 is four. And so now let's let's consider, uh, we will be working with a, the uh, Calabria variety X sub phi, this illustrates the complex structure parameter that is defined as the zeros of a polynomial in some Andean space. Right. 
to be a toy variety, a, a toy variety of uh, products of, uh, of projective uh, varieties. Or something. But uh, in the end, you, the, the, the Picard-Fuchs equation is of degree four, right? So it has this form where theta here means the logarithmic derivative of phi. And the assigns here, the coefficients in the, in the Picard-Fuchs equation are polynomials in phi. This coefficient here is rather important. Uh, it, it contains a discriminant, right, of, uh, of, 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 of the manifold. In other words, the roots of this polynomial are values of phi for which, for which your, your calabi are singular. There are a few exceptions to this, as sometimes you have values of phi that are, well, the calabi are not singular, these are called apparent singularities, but I won't discuss this property in, 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 in this talk. So of course we all know about the quintic in P4, right? So the quintic in P4, I mean the, the differential equation is well known. It's a hypergeometric, in that case it's even hypergeometric, that there, the meaning that, that there are only three, three uh, regular singularities associated to this Picard's equation. Um, so one, one is uh, corresponds to an ordinary, ordinary double point, singularities that are ordinary double points, the other corresponds to the so-called large complex structure limit. And the other corresponds to the Fermat bond, which is an apparent singularity. So, but for for um, for us, we have in mind a, a different case that was originally described by Vero, and I think I am missing a reference here because it was more than one paper. And um, and then Hulek and Vero wrote a very nice paper with the following motivation. I mean, they have this sentence at the beginning of of, of, of their introduction which is that they say that they want to find further examples of modular Calabria varieties, that is Calabria varieties, which are defined over the rationals and whose L series can be described in terms of modular forms. So they did find in using this, uh, uh, this, 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 this manifold, which is we, we now call this the hooded variable manifold, they found modularity at conical singularities. So, a conical singularity in, in, I mean, this is a physicist's name, right? Is, is a Calabria variety that has ordinary double points. Let's to repeat what I was saying before. And so they found uh, a number of examples. Uh, uh, they, they found um, in, in the family of, of these fully pairing manifolds, they found conical singularities and they proved that these that this were modular. Some of the, the, the cases were associated to rigid Calabria manifolds, so the modularity is explained by, the, by that part. As we know, Noriko, Yuri, and, 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 and Duvea have proved modularity for rigid Calabria manifolds. But all the other, the, so for others, other examples that they have are not connected to rigid Calabria manifolds, but and, and they, they still found modularity. So what we are going to see is that uh, we have, uh, in fact, found a, 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 a case of a fully pair manifold in, in this family of manifolds, right? That, that 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 is modular for values of phi, where 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 the where the variety is smooth, right? So there are no singularities there. So this example. Um, uh, is, is, is not so easy to describe, so I will describe it only partially in some sense. Um, it is it can be described by described by a polynomial in P four where none of these x's vanish, uh, none of the none of the homogeneous coordinates in P four vanish, uh, it, and it's given by this equation, right? So we have uh, this is a linear, and then we have one over x, and then and then our parameter phi. The more general Hole Canberra manifold has, para has, has, um, has parameters here. Uh, so, so, um, so has all the has, has parameters. Let me write this down. The, 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 the origin of the Hole Canberra family is a, is a five parameter family. You could add um, AIs there, right? And we are taking them all to be one. So, um, so what we do? So this family, of course, the, 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 this this is not smooth. I mean, the, you you can you have to complete this by uh, the x's vanish. 
and very carefully remove singularities uh, uh, that are when, that are there when, when one of the at least one of the excess vanish. Uh, but then they they explain how to get a smooth variety doing that, and they get a variety uh, uh, this they get a, vari a variety that has they get a family of, of varieties that, that that have reached to one plus five. I mean, the five is in fact related to this. The the the, the five that is related to. So so now we take so we take all the a's equals to one, and we take a quotient by by two groups g one here, which we shift uh, x i, which we shift the i here, uh, which we change x i for x i plus one. Uh, so and then another another, yeah, another symmetry which inverts the x's uh, here. So this is a symmetry of this, of course. Um, so then, when you do that, um, you blow up singularities where uh, there, there are, you find that there are singularities where, where the x's vanish again. Um, so to obtain uh, to to be able to obtain a smooth calaria, and after that procedure, you get a manifold with h to one equals to one. You get a one parameter family, and you can describe it very nicely with this polynomial. H one one is either five nine or five, depending on whether you take uh, the quotient only by DZ5 symmetry, or is five, depending uh, if you actually take the quotient by the product of DZ5 times DZ2 symmetry. But this, this again, this won't matter to us very much because we'll be concerned with the one parameter family of complex structures. Yeah. So this family is, is smooth for generic five. Except when phi is one, one over nine, one over twenty-five, zero or infinity. But it's not a it's not a hypergeometric case. So there are five singular cases. This uh, when phi is one, one over nine or twenty-five, we have a conical type singularities. Right. So this is uh, and, and then we have when phi is zero, we have um, what's called the large complex structure limit, right? Um, so uh, this is uh, another way to say this, this, this is uh, a point of maximum important monogamy. And then we also have a nasty singularity that I won't describe today, which is uh, a five plus infinity. So what we have is, as, as the structure of the of, 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 of the moduli space looks something like, like in this picture, right? this picture here, right? So this, this is the large, this here is the point of large, it's the large complex structure limit. So this one, the, the ones in yellow here, this this one, this one, and this one, except this one, are con the conical singularities. The, the other nasty singularity is not shown here. And um, so, so typically what you do is you write down solutions in series around the large complex structure limit, and you, you find a nice series that converges inside this disk. And then you have to do all sorts of contortions to get solutions everywhere else. Being very careful, um, you typically what you do is some sort of analytic continuation, and that works. Now, what, when we go to when Philip discusses the arithmetic, this picture, um, the arithmetic of Canadian manifolds, this picture will have a, a will, will change because he will be talking about a, a, a periodic version of the periods, and that that the 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 the, the convergence is, is is different there. So why this example, right? Why this example? Um, I mean, we were very lucky in some sense to bump into this example. We were interested at the modularity that they, that Hule Canberra found, uh, but um, so we started playing with this. And, and um, uh, Mohammed, who was a student at the time, uh, we started thinking about the black holes together with this space. And he started computing new computations and found something very interesting that I will show you. That actually Philip will show you uh, next time. But the fact is that it exhibits interesting uh, uh, arithmetic properties which have an interpretation in black hole solutions of string theory. And this example, uh, uh, for a long time, we couldn't find more examples. Um, and there are now other examples. There is a nice paper by Bernish, um, Clemens, Reidegger, and, and Sagir, 
And lately, our we, Philip and I have a joint student, Joseph McGovern, and has been finding one every two or three days. He sent you an, sent us an email telling us that he had found another one. So, um, uh, so I will tell you later why this is difficult in this talk. So, okay, so I think I've said what I need to say about Calabria manifolds for the purposes of these talks. Uh, are there any questions before I go on to the to the black hole solutions? How similar is that Picard Fuchs equation to the hypergeometric equation classical? Oh, they're very different. I mean, this this that's the issue, right? That for example, these I may are, I know they are different, but uh, yeah. what are the similarities? Then basically, I think they are something similar, some properties. So the basic properties that they, they, they like they are regular singularities. They have they, they are more uh, regular singularities. That's the most important property, right? That they, instead of having only three regular singularities, yeah, you have five, and and that complicates your period. Your periods are, are much more complicated in some sense than than the usual Ooh. version of the period, which is all given by these nice gamma functions. Huh? Uh, so you still have gamma functions, but this is, 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 is so the kind of fundamental group is that acts as a monodromy is same, right? For both p one minus three point. Sorry, that, that could you repeat monodromy? The yeah, monodromy group of both fundamental group in the hypergeometric case and the Picard Fuchs case mm -hmm. remains the same, right? P one minus three point. You can still do the same considerations about monodromies, yes. So in fact, we have a very nice picture in our paper uh, with Mohammed and, and Van Stratten about with the monodromies, uh, illustrating the monodromies around the points and, and how you make a group with this. Yeah, so so the, the idea, the ideas that you learn for the hypergeometric case you, you work here. Right? Yeah, that is what I was asking and to understand. Yes, that. yes, yes. So, so yes, so what you have learned for hypergeometric uh, basically works here, you, but you have to be careful with the fact that you have more uh, singularities, right? So, mm. so then, of course, doing these analytic continuations is very complicated. I mean, if you want to find your periods outside the, the UFO region around the large complex structure limit, it becomes more complicated, but it's doable. I mean, in, in this case, it was particularly easy in some sense because it's a very symmetric manifold. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Any other question? Okay, so now um, I will continue with the geometry now, but in terms, uh, so we have uh, discussed Calabria manifolds. So now I will talk about what's called the attractor mechanism in, in, in string theory. So this mechanism was discovered in 95 by Renata Kalosh and Sergio, Sergio Ferrara and Andrew Strominger. Um, and, and then a few, a, few, a few days later, Greg Moore wrote a paper um, uh, uh, with conjectures about arithmetic properties of certain Calabrian manifolds that come up in this attractive mechanism. So the physics associated, uh, the, the physics in this attractive mechanism comes from, from the fact that you want solutions of a certain spin theory of supergravity called type 2b, that, that, that instead of being a flat Minkowski space as usual, you consider a spherically symmetric black hole in four dimensions and a Calabria three fold in the extra six dimensions. So you have a caricature of this sort, right? So you have a black hole here and a Calabria at each point in, in the black hole solution. So the four dimensions, so if you have in this picture, right, you have a, four a, a metric for your black hole, right? That being a, a spherical is a spherically symmetric. And, and supersymmetry, so this, I will leave it as supersymmetric, means that the, the metric has this form. So, so this is time, and this, this here is x, this, this is dx, dx, right? And x is x, uh, is three special uh, coordinates, coordinates in R3, right? Yeah. So this here is the flat the Euclidean metric in, in R3. You have a, a factor here with the, that depends on the radial coordinate R. And then you have a time and the, and the inverse factor you have over there. Right? So 
And you demand that this that this um, spherical symmetric solution is asymptotically flat, right? So this gives you boundary conditions. Uh, at, when R goes to infinity, you want you want this 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 function to tend to zero, right? So it tends to zero, this tends to one, and this tends to one, so you get Minkowski metric. Right? So this 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 metric is written in coordinates that are singular. At, at when R is zero, uh, 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 and so it's a, there is a coordinate singularity when R is zero, and we have a horizon there, right? And this this u this 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 function tends to minus infinity as R goes to zero. So um, if you if you never work with black holes, I mean one way to think about this horizon is to think of the the, the horizon as a surface that separates the interior and the exterior of the black hole. And it is if you are standing at, 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 at infinity, right? Or as as uh, meaning R goes to infinity, this is the last surface that is that is visible from there, right? To properly understand the horizon, of course, one needs to do more work. But I, I think for for these talks, this this is perhaps sufficient, right? So the picture uh, that we have that of uh, our ten-dimensional space is that we have a calavilla, a, a calavilla that with a complex structure that varies with, with this radial coordinate, right? At this, uh, at each, uh, and, and you have one of those at each point in your, in your, in your space time, your black hole. Right? So here you have a black hole metric in terms of this, and you have a horizon that are equals to zero. And I, I, I'm calling phi star, the value of, of the complex structure at, at the horizon. So that's that's the geometric picture that we have in these in these solutions. Now, type to be strings and supergravity limit have have something else. They are not just a space time. They come with with abelian gauge fields. I mean, this is for the gauge fields. So we are actually talking of a charged black hole, right? So it has electric and magnetic charges. So the 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 charge. We're going to describe the charge. I mean, one can show that the charge is is is, is uh, can be put in a in a vector. Um, uh, the, the charges in physics are all integers, so these q's and p's uh, integers, and a and b run run from the zero to h to one plus one. So this is this is because that's the number of, of charges that we get from from the compactification. So um, we can put this 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 vector q in in in, in the, 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 this vector here, these entries, into into a charge vector gamma in H three in the this lattice H three of z, right? With where the, the coefficients here are the charges, and a Poincare, and I will call little gamma the Poincaré duo of that capital gamma. Right, so so this one is in the, in the, the third integer inter homology. Right. Okay, so to, so to repeat, we have a black hole solution. We have a black hole, or we intend to construct a, a four-dimensional black hole, right? That that has that has this 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 uh, this ten-dimensional structure, and that has charges, right? That, that we can put in in, in a lattice in H three. Okay. So the black hole solutions. So you 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 try to solve now equations of motion uh, in, so, in such a way that you preserve the supersymmetry, and that yeah, when you do this exercise, you end up with a uh, with first order differential equations for the function u in the metric that I put here, again, right, and and the complex structure parameters as functions of r. Right, so so uh, so and, it, and this is uh, don't worry too much about the details. I mean, you get you get some differential equations and a boundary condition, right? That u tends to zero as r goes to infinity. So, without getting into the details of this, what one discovers, sorry, before going into that, this row here is one over r. Okay, this is a change of. I mean, this is the canon. The, the people. This is the way people write it in the literature. So when you when you when you think about this 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 linear system, what you discover is what you have this nonlinear system. I'm sorry, 
uh, what you have is a nonlinear dynamical system on the complex structure moduli space with flow parameter rho. So um, just to tell you a little bit about the details here, this object here is the, the, the inverse of the Kähler metric on the moduli space, which is scalar, right? So the matrix is the metric and is giving, a, uh, giving us two derivatives, a Kähler potential, and the Kähler potential is given in terms of the volumetry. So this is basically the volume like this disorder. And this, this, this Z here is called the central charge. And what matters to us today is that apart from this factor that contains the, the Kähler potential, is a period, right? In, uh, so it's a period of omega over over the over the 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 the, 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 the cycle in H three determined by the charges. So, um, I mean, as I said, you don't need to worry too much of the details. What matters is that these equations determine the variation of the complex structure. Right of, of 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 x with respect of r. So I'm just putting them back in here. Right. So these are the equations. So um, so they give you uh, what, what one of the things that you discovered is that e, e to the minus u is a monotonically increasing uh, is monotonic increasing as r goes to to the horizon to to zero right at the horizon. As, as one moves inside uh, from R infinity to R equals to zero. And that the, what you have is a gradient flow for, 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 the, for the central charge for this, 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 this Z um, uh, with, with respect to the Kähler metric, of course. Right? So, so what's the conclusion of this is that if you are given a charge vector gamma, right? The complex structure parameters flow to a value at r equals to zero, phi star, where this z, the absolute value of z, reaches a minimum. And it is independent of the starting value of, of phi, right? Of, of, of phi at infinity, right? So then so this is a, a picture of what is happening. And, and phi is evolving smoothly to, a, to this fixed point, right, at the horizon. So um, as I said, this was discovered originally by Ferrara, Kalosh, and Strominger. And um, what Greg Mugil in 1998 is, is, is to conjecture, is to make conjectures of the arithmetic na nature of the Calabria with this complex structure parameter. Now you recall we, uh, we usually refer to them as a tractor variety. Are there any are there any questions up to here? At least of the main idea of what's happening. No. I have a question for the tractor. Is it unique? Your, I mean, the floats going down. Is that the unique point going down, or there might be more than one? Or yes, the there might be more than one. Yes, and in fact, this this Hulik and Barrow manifold has agreed. Okay, thank you. Yes, it, that depends. That that of course, this this what you get here depends on the charge, right? So for some charge vectors, you get you get uh, you get to a, a one attractor point, and for others, you get to the others. So it's not unique in general. I mean, when they exist, and not necessarily unique. Right? All right, thank you. Other questions. So having said all this, um, it, is, it is not a straightforward exercise to show that these equations can be translated into something very nice, which is the following equation, right? That the complex structure at an attractive point, phi equals to phi star on, on the horizon, is such that the charge vector, now in terms of the, of its, uh, in terms of the cohomology, um, the charge vector, which we defined it like this, belongs to H30 plus H03. In other words, it's two one part and, and, and one two part are zero. But this, this is, as I said, it is straightforward if you, if you know a lot about special geometry, but it's not, it's not an obvious or intuitive fact, right? Basically what happens is that you can massage these equations 
to write this equation, uh, instead of writing it in terms of variation of pi, you write it in terms of a variation of omega. And you discover that then that then omega needs to be a constant, right? And, and when you vary, when you vary uh, omega with respect to the complex structure, you get a three zero part and a two and a two one part, right? But if it is constant, the two one part is zero. And from that you go on to, to, to prove this, right? But as I said, it's not straightforward or or, or, or particularly intuitive, but that's what happens. Right. Um, but, it, but this intuitive, if you, one can make an intuitive argument, I suppose, if you know a lot of special geometry. But we won't really. so, 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 this is what you have. So, this is a very nice condition, right, on the, on, on, on the integral of the homology. Um, so, notice that given the attractor equations, you can now say, well, I want to, to solve these equations for some charges. Uh, such that this is an attractor point, right? So one can solve, one can do that, but generically, what you have, but but uh, but what you, but the result that you get is that 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 gamma is not integral. But gamma needs to be an in, uh, needs to be integral, right? Because these these are this is the quantization condition in physics. Uh, electric and magnetic charges are integral, right? So the question is, when do they exist, right? So it's such that this is this is integral. So, so I as I have been hinting, these varieties have special geometries, both from the geometric point of view and and consequently from the arithmetic point of view. Okay, so now let me explain what the rank one attractor is. Consider the consider H three of R. Meaning, meaning uh, H3 of Z cross with, with R, right? So, so inside, inside, inside that, we have a plane that, that I'm calling VR of Pi, that is spanned over the reals by the real part of omega and the imaginary part of omega, right? So this is this blue plane, this, this, this blue plane here. On the other hand, inside this, this, this cohomology, group, you have lattice vectors, right? In the integral cohomology, which is which is a fixed lattice, right? You have integer vectors here. So you have a rank one attractor, right? So I'm defining what the rank one attractor point is, fine. It's such that this plane coincides with, with gamma, right? So this is the plane, this, this plane is, 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 uh, is that one is H3, 0 plus H3, 3, really. And when this coincides with this one, then you have a, a, a rank one attractor and, and because uh, this is satisfied. Right? So for rank two attractors, and these are the ones that, uh, that are interesting to us and will have uh, these, these striking arithmetic uh, properties, right? So, so let's define this. So at an attractor point of rank two, rank two, there are two vectors now, instead of just one in the in this integer lattice, gamma one and gamma two, right? That they are H2C plus H2 three. So we have this, the, the, this picture here. So we, we still have this, 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 this uh, two plane, right? Spanned by, by the real part of omega and the imaginary part of omega. But now we have a, 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 a lattice plane, right? In, in, Generated by gamma one and gamma two. Now again, as phi varies, this plane here varies, right? Moves inside H three. What happens at the rank two attractor point when phi is five star? The if it exists, right? The, this this plane now coincides with these charges. So with the, with the, coincides with the plane generated by by the charge vectors gamma one and gamma two. And this is rare. This is very difficult to find a Calabria which has run two attractive points, but we seem to be making some progress late in understanding. Right? So, so let me now explain what is why is this so hard, right? So let's go back to the to the to the to the rank one attractor point. So consider consider the lattice, right? We have the, our uh, lattice, the integral lattice H three. So a line, so take a line that passes through the origin, right? Generally, will not pass 
through another lattice point, right? Like, like this one. Unless, of course, each slope is rational, right? Like, like this one, like this one, right? So it's not too hard to find phi such that this, 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 this coincides with that one. But now for random attractors, we have to do the same thing for a, for a plane, right? And now this becomes much harder to find the values of the complex structure that, that, that so that this, this plane generated by the two charge vectors, the lattice coincide with this. So as I just said, I mean, Philip perhaps might have some time to say some progress on, on, on this and how to find them. So what is happening geometrically, right? So we have, um, we start with a lattice in H3, right? An inter integral lattice. And we can complexify to so have complexification of around two lattice and both and can call it V again. And then I have an orthogonal complement of that, the orthogonal of V, right? Of course, this is under this, that, this inflective product of three forms. And it's also, you can, you can complexify, right? So complexification of a rank two lattice of H3. But now what happens in, in with rank two attractors, I, I don't know what this is doing here. What happens in the attractor, in the, uh, with the attractor mechanism is that we have, uh, we have a, 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 a two planes defined over the integrals and that, uh, that, that, that implies a splitting of the whole structure over the real, right? So that splitting is, is what what's gives us the interesting geometric properties and, and um, magnetic properties later. So we understand, so this, we understand that the Hodge conjecture says that this splitting needs, needs to have a geometrical origin. This part, we don't understand yet. We know that there is a conjecture that says that there should be a geometrical origin. That might, uh, but we don't, we haven't been able to see geometrically, you expect to see some elliptic uh, uh, rational, uh, some elliptic surface inside uh, the manifold, uh, but we don't, we don't, we haven't been able to find it. So we, we are working on, on, on trying to understand this, 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 this part. But in turn, what happens is that the splitting becomes apparent in the arithmetic structure of X, right? And this is what Philip will talk about. Right, so Philip um, will put together the, the, all the geometrical structures I've discussed today with the arithmetic of the family, right? Uh, so we, we said that the, for the Hulek and Barrel manifold, there, there will be attractive varieties. Um, and and these these manifolds are smooth. They are, they are, they are that's very nice. I mean, and what happens there is that your 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 zeta function, which will have a, a numerator of degree four because p three is four, uh, splits into two pieces of degree two, right? And 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 the coefficients in this in this split are what gives you the the, the modularity. Right, this 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 one here, this this quadratic is associated to the three zero four zero three part, and it has the same form as that of a rigid Calabria manifold, right? Um, rigid means that there are no complex structure parameters, so so B three is two, so maybe. but this one is 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 more like like an elliptic curve, right? If you if you're willing if you change your former parameter t for p t, this is called a case twist. Right, so 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 this is this looks more like um, like the zeta, the, the rate of the zeta function of an elliptic curve, and this comes from the one two the orthogonal part of this, the one two uh, plus one part, and what Philip would explain is uh, would explain. I mean, uh, this is a, a, um, an introduction or so, uh, what the, the things that he will tell you about that attached to these are modular forms of a specific weight and conductor as expected by, by Tate and Serre. Uh, so, um, yes, yeah, so that's, 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 uh, we'll finish here. Um, can you repeat this last argument? Sorry? Can, can I repeat, repeat the la last argument? The last argument? Yeah. This one? Yes, yeah, so yeah. This, this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the both, how they are related. 
uh, sorry, before this here? No, no, this last slide only. Yes, uh, this slide is uh, is um, uh, an advertisement for Philip's talk. <laughs> right. I so, see. Uh, so what he will tell you is that due to this this splitting of the whole structure, uh, you get a uh, you get uh, a splitting uh, uh, of the of the degree four polynomial that you naturally find in the numerator of uh, one parameter Calabria variety, right? So so normally this for for generic values of psi, this here is of degree four when h to one is one. But at this value, at the value of the, at this value, uh, phi star, the attractor point, the, the, this, this, this polynomial factorizes into two polynomials of degree four, all factorizes over the integers and for all primes, right? And then nice. once you see this factorization, what you, you, you argue, you, 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 I mean, if you're a mathematician, you would, you think that there are conjectures by Tate and Serre, that say yeah. that these, these pieces of degree two must must have modular must be associated with a modular form, and in fact that's what happens in this case. And that Philip will tell you precisely which modular forms are related to these partitions here, right? And each piece, each quadratic piece, is associated to a piece in the in the hot the composition, right? So so this so. So remember that we have a decomposition of the whole structure, the splitting, right, into V and a V perpendicular over the integers. And then, and then that splitting gives rise to this, this factorization in the, in the zeta function, right? And, 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 and then you get um, modular forms from that. And we will tell you which modular forms and so on. And in mm -hmm. fact, in this case, as I said before, we have three attractive forms. And we will tell you the modular form for each case. Yeah. Hey, hello. Yes. Uh, can, yeah. Could I? Uh, yeah. So, so this abracta uh, varieties are uh, probably of CM pipe Calabrians. Not have necessarily. You, have you computed the hot group? Hot group. They they are not CM. No, there were some in in the original conjectures by Greg Moore. Uh, he worked mainly with K three surfaces who were like. Uh, um, given themselves as products of elliptic curves uh, uh, an involution on, on products of two elliptic curves with complex multiplication or something like this. Yeah. So yeah. He had some, yeah, he has some conjectures about CM in those cases, but there is right. uh, there is no analog as far as I can tell at this time about this for this Calabria manifold. But I, I cannot completely empathize with this intuition, right? That there must be something special in that sense. That is not yeah, CM. Because, because, because um, when air functions uh, decomposes like that, uh, it's a suspicion it's that uh, these Calabrias yeah. are of, you know, CM type. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I don't think that is the case. Be, be, not, not no, 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 no one can compute the for Tate group or hot groups for these Calabrias. Uh, well, I, I suppose you have a defining equation for these attractive varieties. Yes. Yeah, the yeah, defining so, equation so, is this one, right? This is really what you, I mean, if you're a mathematician, let me put it where the attractor equation is this one, the one in the box, right? Yeah. You have this, this integer uh, vector of charges. That needs that 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 that, that whose one the, the these two one and one uh, and one part are zero. Right. Yeah, because, this, 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 uh, is a, this is an integral. This is over the integers. Right. Yeah. Yes. So uh, because uh, from here you can see that uh, it's air function uh, characteristic polynomial have to factor into two pieces. Exactly. But you can see right yes. away. Yes. Exactly. But uh, that, that happens uh, from my experience, uh, uh, Calabrias uh, of CM type. Or of yes. course, the CM type Calabrias have to be rigorously defined. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. exactly. So, that, that's so, the thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yes. Yeah. So, so, at the moment, we don't know what that is, right? We <clears throat> know that they have yeah. this property. Yeah. Um, but we don't know what. No, um, I mean, because you have an army of students and postdocs. Maybe you can ask them to compute the 
among protein groups of this uh, fructa varieties. Yeah, good. Uh, so, so yes, I mean, uh, so this is it, it, uh, the connection with number theory to us is fascinating because these modular forms, I mean, as Philip would tell you, um, uh, will give will lead to L functions, right? So yes, these L functions, uh, and then you compute things like the area of the black hole of the horizon, right? And it's yeah. given in terms of L values. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, then uh, those things will be finite, uh, which is uh, with, uh, finite values, right? The, the, I mean, I, I, mean uh, I, I am just, a, as I said, with this arithmetic part, I'm just advertising what Philip will tell you. And, okay, and okay, so I'll wait for Philip's talk. Okay, fine. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, wow. uh, wait for Philip's talk, and, and, and um, you will see these precise, equa precise equations on okay, the use the L values, and they are not, in, they, they are finite. Right, so so that's 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 the thing. I mean, that's uh... yeah. So the another thing is, what are the monodromic groups of these color attractive varieties? The monodromy group, you mean the monodromy of the periods? Yes, yes, the color hooks. Yeah, I mean the the generic the the, the generic monodromy group of this is is contained in SP four, right? For the periods. Yeah. Just for the just for the just for any one parameter family is contained in SP four, just like yeah, the but it, it, uh, it uh, four by four matrix, and then I, I would yeah. like to see yeah. this four by four matrix. What's the yes. shape of that? Yes, I mean there the, 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 there are some expressions about on that. Yes, in, in is, fact, uh, Philip, Philip is going there. to talk about that. Yeah, I, 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 not particularly. We, we were not planning on showing the monodromy matrices, but they, they are in fact in, in our paper, right? They are, I mean, um, I don't know, perhaps we can show them now. Uh, see them, I think I have. Uh, so the monodromy matrices. Um, That is your latest paper that you mentioned in the beginning, right? With yeah, Yoko and I'll, share, I'll, I'll share this other document in a moment. I'm just trying, I'm saving you the flicking through the pages. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we have quite a bit of detail about the periods and the, uh, um, how much do we put on the monogram here? Yeah, because uh, yeah. Yeah, is yeah, it is. a yeah. subgroup of SP4, like a hypergeometric case, yeah. or not? No, 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 it's no, no, no. not hypergeometric, yeah. five yeah. singularities. Let, let, let me stop sharing. No, no, monodromy group. Uh, what would be the... In, in a local uh, monodromy matrix. Monodromy so matrix. Give me just a second. Let me share. Let me share something with you. For a moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for example, this is the monodromy the group around five plus to zero, the conical singularities, and the other singularities. Yeah, yeah. So, they are all computed, I mean, precisely, as I said. I mean, so. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, cup is one or two, right? Depending on which quotient you took. But, um, okay. Oh. They, are, they are precisely given uh, the uh, uh, integer values and they are all in SP4. I see. Right, the, yeah. So, so the module, but there is another modular group, which is when, if you- No, no, compare, it doesn't look yeah. like it, no. Yeah, so there is another modular group, right? If you, that you can conjecture- Wait, para, para modular, para modular. Exactly, yeah, yes. But that's, this is not that one, right? The, this paramodular group is- yeah. Uh, to this, to this uh, piece of degree four in the in the zeta function, right? That's the generic conjecture that these are associated to some paramodular forms, right? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> I know. I have a question. Not to say anything, but to Noriko. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the Mumford Tate group. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to my shame, I don't know what this is. So, can you send us a reference? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Uh, well, uh, it uh, can be defined, but then uh, no one is able to compute it. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Philip. I can join the club of the people who can't. Continue. Okay, I can send it to you. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. Philip, uh, I, I mean, you can think of it as the Zariski closure of the Monodromy Group. As the Zariski closure, closure <laughs> of the Monodromy Group. Okay, but I need to think about that. Yes. So now, saying, it's a, saying it's a type CM is what I think what Noriko is getting at, would say that basically it's a Taurus. So that's yes, a yes, that's a commutative. It's a commutative, becoming a commutative, or going to all the way to the closure. Yeah. So when you take the Zariski closure of the monodromy, it's a theorem, you get a reductive algebraic group. And you say it's of type CM if you get a torus. So, mm -hmm. um, so if you calculate it and you get a torus, then you say it's of type CM. I guess that would be a definition. And yes. I guess what yeah, Noriko is saying- I'm Calculating is the more main, main obstacle. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not so easy to do. So you're computing, I mean, you have to know the monodromy, and then you have to take what's called the Zariski closure over, yeah, say, the yeah. rational field. And you're asking that that thing is a torus. Okay. 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 And, well, uh, here, are the, here are the matrices. These are the matrices. Yeah, it is a matrices. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not sure how difficult it is given those matrices. And a to find the risky closure over Q. Yeah. It is That's difficult. Right. Nobody is able to do that up to now. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, okay. So, Philip, uh, I have a question for your talk tomorrow. Uh, it's from the tomorrow, last Thursday. slide. Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. But I think since we were on the last slide, am I wrong in thinking that that's splitting? It, think of it as a splitting of crystals. Is that a slope decomposition into different slopes or yeah. not? Am I thinking wrong? I would have to understand what you mean by slope. <laughs> Define oh. <with> crystal. <laughs> it has you know to do with the piadic. Piadic the, the order of a coefficient, but I don't think so. Yeah, so it's the roots. It has to do with the valuations. We, we do I don't that. think so. I mean, no, it's maybe not. Maybe it's something else. So yeah, I'm just okay. wondering about your splitting, what kind of gadget it really is. But, but um, if you send me a, a two-line email yes. explaining what... So this is the splitting. And as 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 uh, Zenia is showing you, and if you send us a two line email explaining what it is that you're asking of the alpha and beta, yeah, in that equation, then okay, we can think about it. Yeah, but we we do know okay. a little bit about the crystals. In fact, in the paper with with with. Um, we so, we, depending on your question, we'll uh, uh, send the question and then we'll, we will point to something. I mean, in the paper with Duco in 21, we have a whole paragraph on, on, on these uh, crystals. And, okay. Uh, well, let, let me take a look and, and see if I can clarify. I'm just wondering what the nature of that decomposition is. I mean, for, I mean it's an arithmetic decomposition of some kind. Yeah. Oh, it's the two motifs, two motifs. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to check in that I have seen this in my old paper. What happened is we use uh, in the hybrid geometric setting, there is a Whipple formula relating 7F6 at 1 and to a 4F3 at 1. So we consider what's happening. It, it actually, in the background, there are representations, which is five dimensional and it decomposes into three parts. So there is a outer, it's a wave six modular form. And then in the middle, there is a wave four modular form with a tail twist, very much like what you've seen, mm -hmm. but there is additional one dimensional. Yeah. So it's a, actually from the formula, you could actually have some sense of there is additional kind of structure going on. Yeah. But that's higher way for wave six. Just for wasting. Yeah. And actually, uh, I should say that there are also examples for wave four. I can go back to double check, but I will also send you a two line email about 
yeah, which paper you're talking about. Okay, if you can do that, that would be great. Yeah. Actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any um, other questions? No. All right, let's then Sandy again for the wonderful talk. Uh, well, thank you very much. We'll see you. We'll see you together. Yeah, we later. look forward to part two. All right. Sorry? Okay. Yeah. We look forward to part two of the lecture series. <laughs>